Well, so many of the very best do feature in the Hall of Fame, and that's surely where one of Scotland's best ever fighters belongs. And at last, Ken Buchanan has achieved recognition. Ian Dark spoke to the former world lightweight champion about his brilliant career and his life now. Ken Buchanan was a dazzling lightweight champion of the world, the pride of Edinburgh, and a boxing rarity, a British fighter revered and respected in America. The only surprise about his induction into the Hall of Fame is that it's taken this long. Oh, it's brilliant. It's the icing on the cake of my career. Um, I've won everything else, and to get this from America, it's an added bonus. What kind of weekend is it going to be? Because you'll be meeting all kind of boxing uh, celebrities, won't you? Oh, yeah, they'll be there. All different ages, groups. Jane Lamotta is the one that I'm really looking forward to meeting, like, you know, because the I've seen, full. seen the full of and it'd be nice to shake the, man, the man's hand. The Allies and the Fraziers and Haglers and all that, I've, I've met all the aim, and it's going to be brilliant just to be back speaking to them again. Buchanan's biggest night came amid the searing heat of San Juan in Puerto Rico in 1970. The manager of world champion Ismael Laguna was looking for a soft defence on home territory. When he selected Buchanan, he got it horribly wrong. It fixed me up, like, you know, but I mean, uh, I don't think he was calling me a patsy when I finished, when, at the end of the fight, when I beat him after over 15 rounds. Mm. Um, and I believe that apparently uh, Laguna was looking looking for him with a knife, like, you know, to say, what did you get me a fight like this? Like, you know, can you not get me somebody easy? But, um, oh, that was, a, that was, a, that was one of the big boobs of the year in um, American boxing. Buchanan left Puerto Rico with the world title and the bell as a memento of his great night. The reception back home in Edinburgh was phenomenal. Buchanan was front and back page news and thousands lined the streets to greet him. Oh, it was brilliant. Oh, un unbelievable. I got the bus right through the centre and um, there was everybody, I think, that lived in Edinburgh was there. Even the vis visitors turned out to see me and uh, oh, it was fabulous. Ken Buchanan had started boxing as an eight-year-old, weighing three and a half stone. But his path to the top was a minefield of snubs and setbacks. Having won his British title, he retired at 24, feeling he was being frozen out. I just got fed up with it because I, the money I was making from sporting clubs, it was, uh, it was sweeties, you know, so I just decided to forget about it. I gave it a belt up, sent it back to the board, and I went back to my profession as a joiner. And I was making more money as a joiner than I was as a professional boxer, undefeated British champion. Ridiculous. And even when he won his world title belt, the British board refused to recognize him because they didn't recognize the WBA. But the Americans loved his smooth boxing and brilliant work with the left hand. The writers there made him their fighter of the year ahead of Frazier and Ali. At Madison Square Garden, he again denied his old foe Laguna. It's a night he still relives on video. I knew there wasn't an awful lot in it, but I just, I just felt that I'd just helped with more punches than he had hit me with, like, you know, although I look worse. Unanimous. That's my dad. Has Eddie Thomas look? Aye. Yeah. Buchanan could have reigned for years, but in 1972, he ran into a snarling 21-year-old Panamanian who turned out to be quite good. His name was Roberto Duran. Oh, he really hurt him that time. Duran's brutal assault included the unpunished low blow that ended the fight. The only time he caught me with two good punches was after the bell, and it was down there and not up here. Yeah, the 13th round, it was very controversial, wasn't it? The following day on NBC television, he admitted it. He admitted the fact that um, the, the bell, it was after the bell, like, you know, but he sees at the heat at the moment, the time and all that, like, you know, he sees there wasn't nothing much I could do, like, you know. But uh, he still wouldn't give me a return back at the shot, a shot at the title game because he knows I had a bad night that night. And, uh, well, as I say, like, you know, he was managed by a good manager who just said, no, no, you're not fighting Buchanan again. It was simple as that, and I never got a chance at him again. What was he like, Duran? How good was he at 21? Well, he was very arrogant, like, you know, and he, he was fast. He just wanted to, he wasn't fussed about anything. He just he'd hit whoever was in front of him, mm. including the referee. But um, the, the, on, it was just a, it was just a, it was, it was a guy that came from nothing, and he just wanted to go to the top, and he done that. And, you know, fair play to him, like, you know, and I wouldn't knock him, and I wouldn't say nothing bad about him, but, I still, I'm still looking for this, uh, this return, even today. <laughs>
After that, Buchanan still won British and European title fights, including one against a future Scottish world champion in Jim Watt. But he failed to regain his world title in Japan, and amid injuries and money problems, there were retirements and comebacks until he finally called it a day, age 36. But he's never looked back in anger. I had my time. I was born then, and I'd done what I did then. And what I've done then is something that's really never been achieved again. And um, it's going to take, maybe take a long time for it to happen. Mm. But um, no, I'm, I'm quite happy. It's ironic that after nearly 70 pro fights, it was a back injury caused tackling a burglar that left him not as active as he'd like to be in his 50s. But they can't take away the memories or mementos of one of the greatest boxers Britain's ever produced. Welcome to the Hall of Fame, Ken Buchanan. Some double act you'll be on that day because you're going to be inducted on the same day, is that right? That's right, yeah, yeah. Now, going back, Barry, apparently you sparred with Ken Buchanan. I did. He was a great help to me, and he's a fighter that I've had so much respect for and regard for over the years. He's a much underrated fighter, went out to America. We, we heard all that with Ian's report. But he's a stunning fighter, and, and he was great to me, and he helped me, and he, he, he brought me on in, in leaps and bounds, and we sparred about 30 rounds together. And he lived with me in Northern Ireland while we were sparring for a fortnight, and he was a great help. And he, was, he talked to me too. He just didn't spar with me and thump me in the gym. He, he, uh, he actually gave me encouragement and, and uh, gave me great advice, and I'm delighted for him. And it's great to see him so lucid Absolutely and sharp. Right. He's as clever and, as he ever was, and, and I'm delighted that he's contented because he looks contented. The good old days, Johnny. A brilliant fighter like that could earn more as a joiner than in the ring. You the know, good old days, eh? Yeah, sure, yeah okay. back in the day, you know, you think to yourself, a lot of these fighters, I'm surprised they're not very bitter and they, they're not very, you know, upset or, or, or don't want nothing to do with the game because they probably look at the champions of today and think, well, they were not of my standard. Mm. I like Ken Buchanan. And, and he, unfortunately, he said he's content with what, his situation. He said, that's, was, that's when I was born. You know, that's how it was. Uh, Scow wasn't around then. You know, it wasn't there wasn't a chance for him to earn big money then, uh, and it was just his situation he was in. You can understand any of the modern day fighters making sure they make the most out of this tough game. Certainly, Barry, thanks very very much for being with us for this part. Thanks Johnny, for if you'd be good enough to stay with us for the rest of the show.